DreAllDay.com. Topic of this video is a very simple one. Do it now. Do it now. I was thinking about uh, something that happened like, man, it's 2000. I'm recording this in 2024. And today I was driving past somewhere where I remember something happening, uh, something that I did like five years ago in the area that I drove past. And I'm like, damn, that was 2019. That was five years ago. It doesn't feel like it was five years ago. It don't feel like it was yesterday, but it also doesn't feel like it was five years ago. And it got me to thinking of how fast time goes by in life period for all of us, how fast that time goes by. And before we know it, we don't have that much time left to play around with. And then I have a young child. You know, whenever I'm walking around with my son, he's not even two years old. <clears throat> as of this recording. I always see these like older, most of the time it's men. It'll be these older men, they'll see me with my child, and they'll, I mean, they can see that he's pretty young. And they'll say something like, man, you'll, you'll never forget this time, you always remember this time. Or they'll say something like, man, I got kids, and they're like 12, or I got a daughter, she's 25, and my son's 30, and I remember when they were that age, and now, you know, they're, and now they're this age, and now they're old, and all this stuff. People always say this stuff like that to me, how fast the time goes by. And it got me to thinking of a couple of things. First of all, how we all need to move with a sense of urgency. We need to act with urgency all day, every day, in all the things that we do, because time is always going by at a steady pace. You've heard, if you ever heard me talk about time management, I probably you probably seen a couple of my uh, shorter videos, the shorts that I post on uh, YouTube specifically and other apps. There's no such thing as time management. You can't, you don't need to manage time, you need to manage yourself. But time, what we call time management needs to be called self management. And there's an author, or he was a businessman, he's more a businessman than he was an author, but he was a businessman who wrote books. His name was W. Clement Stone. And he's a guy who, at the end of Napoleon Hill's career, he actually employed Napoleon Hill because he had read Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, got a lot of value from the book. And he went and created his own business based on the things that he got out of Napoleon Hill's book. He created this course called the Success System That Never Fails. And one of the things that W. Clement Stone was known for always doing with himself was telling himself, do it now, do it now, do it now. It was like a, a mantra he would give himself, do it now. That all day, every day, he was just telling himself, do things now. And he was a person, he was a man of action. Obviously, you can tell by just that phrase the fact that he would always tell himself to do things now and it's something that i've been working on myself if i could take one thing that i've been working on myself i'm always working on a lot of things but one thing i've been very conscious of with myself lately is telling myself to do things now stop putting things off till later stop getting to the end of days with too many things left undone and incomplete and getting more things done now and that really is about this whole concept of collapsing time frames and collapsing collapsing time frames all that means is we want to reduce the amount of time between when we think about doing something or we tell ourselves we're going to do something or we get an idea to do something and actually doing the something whatever the something is doing it now instead of telling ourselves we're going to do it later because every minute and i'm going to do a masterclass episode on this exact concept every minute that we allow to pass in between the thought of doing a thing and when we get around to actually doing the thing lessens the probability that we ever do the thing so the more time you allow to pass after a thought the less chance that you actually do it why because first of all the law of inertia that we tend to continue to do what we've already been doing so if you are already procrastinating on something it's easier to just keep procrastinating than it is to break the procrastination and actually do it which means when you get the thought you might as well do it right then because that's the hottest that you're ever going to be when it comes to that idea or that situation doesn't mean you can't think of something today and do it in a month doesn't mean none of us has ever done that but most of the things we think about doing that we put off until later later becomes never that's most of the thing you think of most of your life you'll notice that that's what happens the other thing is another reason why uh, that space between idea and action matters so much is because the human brain is always firing we're always thinking of things all the time most of the things that we think about never actually happen and many of the things that we think about that don't happen the reason they don't happen is because we forget 
you forget because the thought that you just had two seconds ago gets erased with the thought that you're going to have five seconds from now. It just gets replaced by the new thought. Your brain has this random access memory. It's kind of like the working memory of your brain, the same way your computer has working memory. When you overload it with too many things at the same time, then the brain just, the computer just stops working the way that it was working before because there's no space. And what happens is, instead of it not working, it's not like your brain just shuts off. What happens is it starts deleting things. It pushes the old things out to bring new things in. So the thing that you were thinking about 10 minutes ago that you told yourself you needed to remember, because you didn't do anything with it, now it's old, quote unquote. Now the next thought that you have replaces that thought. That old that old thought that's 10 minutes ago now gets replaced with a new thought simply because you didn't do anything with it. You didn't give your brain a reason to remember it. You didn't do any type of double entry, like writing it down, which tells your brain that it's a little bit more serious than the things that you just merely thought about. And now there you go. It's been replaced. Now that thing's never going to happen. This is what happens. This is what happens in our minds all the time simply because we are not disciplined about moving ourselves to do things right now. And we allow these time frames to exist, these spaces of time, rather, to exist in between the thoughts that we have of things to do and the actions of actually doing them. And what then happens following that is a year goes by, five years go by, like I gave you my little anecdote to start this video. And I'm like, damn, that was five years ago? Don't even feel like it was five years. Or these, when I see people who have kids, they see me with my child who's younger than their kids. And they say, man, I remember my kid was that age. It was 15 years ago. It was 30 years ago. And the time just goes by. Why? Because the human brain only works on what we let it know is serious for us. And we have so many thoughts over the course of a day that can't all be serious. But the ones that are serious are the ones that we do more than just think about them with our brains on meaning we do more than just think about it because if you just think something again you think you might think who knows how many thoughts i'm sure there's some science behind this you probably think tens of thousands of thoughts every single day but how many of them how many of them are actually important how many of them actually get acted on probably a lot less than the, the total number and the way that you can one simple thing you can do to make sure that something is a recording in the brain as serious and important more important than the other idle random thoughts is to do more than just think about it. What else can you do? I call this a double entry system. So any of you know anything about accounting, you know that accountants use a double entry system. Most of them do, at least a double entry, which means you enter the same transaction in two different places just to basically fact check yourself, just to make sure everything should look exactly the same on this side that it looks on that side, or in this ledger that it looks in that ledger, just to make sure you didn't make any mistakes, no oversights, and everything has to add up and come out to where it's supposed to come out to. And one way you can do a double entry it's very simple. Do it. See, if I think a thought and don't do anything with it, like I think a thought right now, oh, I should call my grandma and say hi. Or I just thought it. Now, if I don't do that right now, what am I going to do? I'm going to get another thought and somebody's going to beep at me on the highway. Or I'm going to see something on a billboard or I'm going to get to my destination here and start talking to the people there. And I'm going to forget that I even had the thought that I should call my grandma. But if I was to just pick up the phone and call her right now, there's a pretty good chance the conversation happens. Or at least I'll leave a voicemail so you can call me back, right? Because I double entry it. The second entry was me actually doing something. You get what I'm saying? Another way of double entry is taking notes, writing down your ideas. You get an idea of something that maybe you can't even do it right now. Let's say I get an idea of I should you know, get the car washed, but I can't wash it right now in this moment. I can't go wash the car right now if I got somewhere else to be. But I can write it down. Now, when I get home, I can look at my notes from the day and I say, oh, yeah, wash the car. Now I can put a note for tomorrow. Let me go to the car wash in my calendar. So now that's a triple entry. What's the chances of it happening? A lot higher than if I just thought of it idly. Get what I'm saying here? So these are all things that you can do to help your brain, which is the most powerful tool known to man, yet still has limitations to help your brain get you doing the things that you want to be doing. But just thinking the things alone is not enough. And I just gave you some examples and I just explained to you, hopefully, logically enough that you can understand why just thinking things alone is not enough. And the, the main idea I want you to get from this is doing it now. So when you get thoughts of things that you could do, should do, would do, and there are things that you can do right now, do them right now. Give yourself fewer excuses to not do things right now and just move yourself to action. Move yourself to action. Uh, be your own employee. If you were your own boss, you wouldn't accept your employee telling you 
I'll do it later or I'll do it tomorrow or I'll get to it when I feel like it or when the coast is clear or you know, when, I'm, when I'm not tired anymore or when the kids go back to school or when it starts raining outside. You wouldn't accept your employee telling you that, right? Okay, so why are you accepting it from yourself? This is what I mean by be your own boss. And I'll probably do a, a whole video just on this concept alone. But you got to be the boss of yourself the same way that if you worked at a job, your boss told you to do something. You can't tell your boss you're not going to do it. You can't negotiate with your boss. Well, I might do that, but I'm only going to do half of it. Or I'll start it next week. Or, you know, yeah, maybe one day I'll get around to that. You can't say that to your boss because you... Okay, so why are you saying it to yourself? Treat yourself with that same level of respect. And again, I'll do a whole video just on that concept alone. And a couple other things that I'm thinking of now that I'm talking about this. But let's just tie this one up with that point right there. So work on your game university. That's the place where I do all my coaching. If you'd like to have me as your direct coach, our four part framework is based around mindset, strategy, systems, and accountability. Go to work on your game university.com. The link is down below in the description to this video. And you can see what we're doing in our program. You can schedule a time to have a conversation with us where we can talk about where you're at, what you're working on, where you want to go, and how we could possibly help you get there. If we see you as a good fit and we believe we can help, we'll tell you that and we'll tell you how it works from there. That's all again, work on your game, Work on your game. Dre, all.